I'm wondering how many people here are currently living the life that your five-year-old self would most want for you? <laughs> no, no. My five-year-old self would want more fun. Your five-year-old self, are you living the life that that, that being would most want for you? I don't remember. No, no, no. <laughs> so for a lot of us here, that was a little bit ago. Right? How could I possibly remember back to being five? All these years have passed. From my perspective and in the learning that I've done, what, I, what I've come to recognize is that remembering back to that time really is far less about how old we are in terms of our chronological age and far more about how many layers we've built up over the years. So here we are, we're born. We grow to be five, we do our thing, we hang out, we, we dance when we feel like it, we play when we want to, we get excited about things, we get angry about things, we get sad about things, and we just let ourselves be until we figure out that's not okay. And so depending on the homes that we're, we're brought, you know, brought up in, depending on the cultures that we are part of, the religions, depending on lots of things, depending on our societies, Depending on have I seen war, have I seen chaos in my life, have I known abuse, all of these things add up over time and I see it like we put on coats. So this little gem, which I'm calling our five-year-old self, this little delightful being that is full of possibility. Can you do that? Yes, I can. Right? That's what a five-year-old, our five-year-olds say, yes, I can. And it's our... 38-year-old selves that say, oh, I don't think I can do that, right? Why is that? Why is that? It's because I built up layers of who I think I should be. I start to externalize my worth. And it becomes layered. And so I walk into the world and I meet you here. And that significantly impacts the decisions that I make in my life especially around career. What you're, what, I mean, the reason I asked, what, are you doing what your five-year-old self would most want for you? And that's because I'm wondering how far we've gotten from that place. My work in this world is to support each of us to become more childlike and less childish. So i just like to do a little visual for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my visual swiped off the board miserably. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about a decision-making model and about how, what it looks like when I'm only making these externalized uh, decisions about my career, my life, what I'm supposed to do in the world. Okay, so pardon my circle. This is not a bad circle, is it? Now draw a peace sign. Okay, but picture <laughs> those are all, yeah, all even. Okay, so I'm going to put two words down. Context and other. I'm going to leave that as a little secret, little secret triangle for a second. So, context. Context is what? Environment. Our environment, right? So again, we're, we're talking about making decisions. So contextually, I grew up in a small town in Ontario. It was a steel town. So what do you do in a steel town? You work in the steel mill. You work in the steel mill. You make steel, or you sell steel, or whatever you do with steel, right? That's what you do. So if I ask my dad, Dad, why did you get into steel? Why did I get into steel? There were no other options for me. That's what you do when you live in a steel town. And so, contextually, and it made money. I had lots of friends who went into teaching from only this perspective. Guess what, Marcy? I'm going to be a teacher. Why do you love kids? Oh, no, not really. But the thing <laughs> is, is that I get my summers off. And it, pay, you know, it pays really well. And I get you know spring break off. It's fabulous. Ooh, remind me that's not the school I want to send my kids to. <laughs> Again, we, we get this idea, this notion, people who will say, I'm going into a trade. Why do 
do you love working with your hands? No, no. But there's a lot of money to be had in these trades, and I hear that there's lots of there's lots of jobs. Okay, all right. Do you see that? Again, I'm making decisions from a, a contextual base because I've learned not so much to listen to myself about what I want, but what's available to me. And you can imagine that if I make my decisions only from that perspective, I'm cutting out some pretty significant pieces. Other. What did Miss Rosemary Adams, my mother, want for me? She wanted a doctor. <laughs> right. She wanted a doctor or a speech therapist. I went. I started a master's in speech pathology, which I quit after six months. And my mother's still telling people I'm a speech therapist. Right. <laughs> so again, are we? Do we listen to what what we think society wants for us? Or our families? What's valuable in those? In that capacity. Listening to others is important. When I go to make decisions about what kind of work I want to do, absolutely I want to hear, do you love your work? Why do you love your work? Do you hate your work? Why do you hate your work? And I want to take that perspective and I want to listen to it. But if I listen to your perspective about an industry over my own, I'm losing out a significant piece. If I had listened to what others were telling me about going into career counseling, I never would have gone in, <laughs> ever. Because what the, the story was is, oh, listen, they're cutting all the government funding. You can't get into that business, Mercy. You'll be, you'll be out of work within a week. Okay, but what those, what, if I listened only to them, what I'd be forgetting is the most significant piece. And that's me. What do I burn for? Why was I put on the planet? Because I believe fully that every single human being is here for a purpose. And so it's so interesting to me that so many of us forget. We forget what our five-year-old self most wanted for us. So if anybody's looking for some support, if you need someone to hold your hand as you skip back to who you are, make sure you give me a call. I'm here to help. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.